Today, the Pro Build Canary. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to this post is covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. In my weekly property rounds with Edwin Almeida, we've been highlighting the growing pressures on the construction sector, with the rising cost of building supplies magnified by supply chain disruptions, labour issues, with rising contractor costs, and falling prices and sales of high-rise apartments, many of which contain significant defects. The whole confection stinks and is made worse by government policy, which has tried to pull forward demand with its home builder scheme and other support mechanisms, support, of course, for the construction sector at the expense of taxpayers and potential purchasers. And now, in confirmation of the rumours which many have been hearing for recent weeks, it's been reported that an Australian building giant ProBuild is on the verge of a shocking collapse after a disastrous high-rise project dragged it into massive debt. The grim news broke on Wednesday evening as tradies were called off work sites across the country. The collapse of ProBuild, which suffered a drop in revenue last year to $1.6 billion from $2.4 billion in the year earlier, is by far the largest in a string of construction industry failures and would have a devastating wider impact. The company which operates in Victoria, New South Wales, Western Australia and Queensland has more than 520 employees and thousands and thousands of apartments currently under construction. The bulk of the projects, which also include more than 370,000 square metres of retail work, are in Melbourne, where the head office is based. This after its South African parent appointed administrators, after propping up with 2 billion rand, or $132 million, over the past four years, Johannesburg-based listed builder Wilson Bailey Homes Ofcon said on Wednesday that it put the Australian business into administration after it had severely depleted its resources and racked up losses to date that have had a significant impact on WBHO's overall financial performance. With effect from the 22nd of February 2022, the company will no longer provide financial assistance to ProBuild holding company WBHO Australia, WHBO said in a statement. This has led the WBHOA board to commence with an application for the administration of WBHOA. WBHO said it intends to honour its existing parent company obligations provided to Australian institutions but made no comment about unsecured creditors. Apart from the hit to Australia's subcontracting industry, whose members perform up to 90% of the actual construction work done on building sites, the loss of ProBuild will deplete the country's building capacity. It was one of just a handful of very large contractors, along with Multiplex, Lendlease, CPD and John Holland, that had the capacity for large-scale projects. As a result, Workers left ProBuild sites on Wednesday in Melbourne at the Far East Consortium's West Side Place project site, a $2 billion four-tower development that includes a new luxury Ritz-Carlton hotel, guards from a different security company from the day before secured the site. But they let subcontractors drive their private vehicles into the basement level of the site to pick up tools and personal effects. And workers were seen pulling equipment and tools from Seabuzz property at 443 Queen Street project in Brisbane, with construction to cease by the end of Wednesday. Touted as the nation's first subtropical design building, the riverfront complex has cost the company's Queensland arm, PCA Queensland, more than $28 million. The 443 Queensland Street project, which involves high-quality apartments, has hemorrhaged as much as $120 million dollars according to reports. The property features 264 luxury residential apartments but with delays and technical issues is already well behind its late 2021 completion date. Originally heralded as Brisbane's first premium subtropical residential tower with views across the city the building's future now hangs in the balance. 
ProBuild Constructions Australia reported injecting $15 million into the company last year as part of a recapitalisation to combat the Queensland division's losses. We were just told to pick up our tools because ProBuild were pulling the pin on all their projects across Australia, one worker at the site told the Australian. Another said workers had been left hundreds of thousands of dollars out of pocket due to unpaid bills. It's going to run into millions what traders are owed, they said. Mumbai's firm is one of the largest construction companies in Australia, with revenue of $1.3 billion. According to the company's website, it's delivered over 10,000 apartments in the last five years and has more than 300,000 square metres of commercial office space currently under construction. The firm is behind several iconic recent builds, including the Melbourne Convention Centre and the new Victorian Police Headquarters, as well as Sydney's new glass IMAX building in Darling Harbour. However, lengthy delays have caused some projects to go well beyond budget, and despite a pandemic-driven construction boom, the company turned a profit of just $4 million. And the company is involved in a range of office, residential and other projects across the country. They include the 65-storey residential UNO building in Melbourne, scheduled for completion next year, as well as new campus buildings at Victoria and Curtin Universities. And ProBuild is currently developing a new 18-storey block in Melbourne's Elizabeth North, which will be the new headquarters for biotech giant CSL. It's also the firm behind the 1000 La Trobe office tower in the Docklands and a build-to-rent development at Caulfield Village. And in Sydney, the company is building the W Hotel on Darling Harbour and an apartment complex in Macquarie Park. And construction is also underway in Perth for the towers at Elizabeth Quay. And it was involved in all stages of the redevelopment of the iconic Chatston Shopping Centre since 1988, including the award-winning West Mall redevelopment, which completed the creation of two levels of retail tenancies throughout the centre. And more recently, ProBuild delivered a 10-level office tower at the centre with basement car parking and major luxury retail extensions. The squeeze on materials and labour worsened the trading environment for ProBuild, like other builders, after Treasurer Josh Frydenberg blocked the planned $300 million sale of the company by WBHOA to China State Construction Engineering Corporation on national security grounds. At the time, a South African parent company said it remained optimistic about the fundamentals of ProBuild and its prospects in the Australian market. And so far, ProBuild and reported liquidated Deloitte have refused to comment. But according to the AFR, the company had problems of its own making. WBHO said last year that it was concerned with the troublesome Western Road upgrade project in Sydney which had a forecast loss of $161 million by June last year, and which had forced the parent company to pay in $141 million to ensure completion. And a separate project for Seabus property at 443 Queen Street, Brisbane, for Seabus, had racked up a $48 million loss. WBHO last year resolved to withdraw ProBuild from the Queensland and WA markets by the end of financial year 22, and to take a more conservative approach to bidding in New South Wales and Victoria after the failed sale. It was the company's intention to see some decline in the order book as we reduced our exposure to high-risk projects, it said on Wednesday. However, sourcing acceptable projects has been made more difficult with procurement activity and the number of available projects being impacted by COVID-19. The Australian government's hardline approach of managing COVID-19 through a combination of border restrictions, snap lockdowns, and mandatory work from home regulations for many sectors has had a considerable impact on property markets, as well as other industries, such as the leisure industry, WBHO said. This made it impossible to keep supporting the business, the parent company said. Of particular concern is the project delivery capability of the business, which has been negatively affected by unplanned COVID-19 restrictions, the contractual environment, and the increased difficulty in raising guaranteed facilities necessary to secure new work, WBHO said. Now, of course, there's plenty to play out here, and some projects may well be rescued down the track, even if there are losses taken. But this is definitely, to me, a canary in the coal mine because we know that the high-rise construction sector in particular and those large construction players are under huge pressures. And 
with the fact of the matter being that supply chain disruption is still there, the cost of materials is still rising, and the cost of labour are rising, I wouldn't be surprised to see more collapses ahead. We'll have to keep an eye on it, won't we? Now, if you're buying your home in Sydney's contentious market, you don't need to stand alone. This is the time you need to have Edwin Almeida from Ribbon Property Consultant standing alongside you. Buying a property is both challenging and adversarial. The vendor has a professional on their side. Emotions run high, price discovery and price transparency are hard to find, and then there's the wasted time and financial investments that you make. Edwin understands your needs, so why not engage a licensed professional to stand alongside you? With RPC, you know you have experience, knowledge and master negotiators looking after your best interests. So shoot Ribbon an email at info at ribbonproperty.com.au and if you use the promo code DFAWTW slash Martin, you can get a 10% discount offer. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.